This is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and lesson four in our exam preparation for the technician class operator exam for your technician class amateur radio license. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about authorized and prohibited transmissions, which is some more FCC rules, but I'll try to keep it as entertaining as possible, though it's going to be a challenge. All right, so let's get started. All right, with which countries are FCC licensed amateur stations prohibited from exchanging communications? Bottom line, it's any country that tells the ITU they don't want it. Uh, for instance, North Korea is a good example. They're very isolated um, from the rest of the world. There are several answers, possible answers for this question that look sort of the similar. Sort of similar. The bottom line, what you're looking for is ITU, and that'll put you on the right answer. On which of the following occasions may an FCC licensed amateur station exchange messages with a U.S. military station? All right, the Part 97 only allows one occasion, and this is the Armed Forces Communications Test, and that's it. For this question, just remember U.S. Military and Armed Forces Day. Make that association, you'll get this question right. Next question, when is the transmission of codes or ciphers that hide the meaning of a message allowed by an amateur station? Now, this is a pretty neat answer. It's only allowed when transmitting control commands to space stations or radio control craft. And this makes sense because you don't want just anybody to have control of that equipment, and that's some seriously expensive equipment. Also, depending on the type of craft, uh, loss of control can re result in um, pro other property damage and, and personal injury or death. So they're only allowed when controlling spacecraft and radio control craft. This is a good one. What is the only time an amateur station is authorized to transmit music? The only time it's allowed is when it's incidental to authorized retransmitting of signals from manned spacecraft. Now, I have no idea why this exception exists, but uh, the way I got this answer right was I associated Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon with the question and Fly Me to the Moon, manned spacecraft, music, easy job. When may amateur radio operators use their stations to notify other amateurs of the availability of equipment or for sale or trade? Now, if you have gear that's associated with an amateur station, you can sell that gear over the airwaves. Uh, however, it has to be used for an amateur station and you can't make a habit of it. Amateur radio is not eBay. What, if any, are the restrictions concerning transmission of language that may be considered indecent or obscene? Now, the bottom line is that any such language is prohibited. So any type of obscene or vulgar language is pro prohibited for use on the amateur frequencies. It's always a good rule of thumb to be nice and polite and treat everybody like you would treat your mother. Also, certain subjects tend to bring out the worst in people, so kind of gauge the conversation to avoid stuff like politics and religion and other uh, charged subject matter. But Ultimately, for this question, vulgar or, or obscene language is absolutely prohibited on amateur frequencies. What types of amateur stations can automatically retransmit the signals of other amateur stations? The answer is auxiliary, repeater, or space stations. Now, to help sort this out, when you're looking at the other possible answers, anything with the terms Earth station is just too broad. It can mean any station on Earth. And beacons are a lot like radio frequency lighthouses. They only transmit. They don't retransmit. So the answer is the only amateur stations that can automatically retransmit signals of other amateur stations are auxiliary stations, repeaters, and space stations. When is an amateur station authorized to automatically retransmit the radio signals of other amateur stations? All right, signals can be automatically retransmitted by auxiliary, repeater, and space stations. I'll say that again, auxiliary, repeater, and space stations. From the other possible answers, anything with Earth station in it is far too broad of a term. Uh, it, it encompasses pretty much everything on Earth, and beacon stations only transmit, they do not retransmit, which makes sense. In which of the following circumstances may the control operator of an amateur station receive compensation for operating the station? Now the possible answers for this, the, an the correct one is when the communication is incidental to classroom instruction at an educational institution. Now there are several instances where an operator can receive compensation, but those are fairly rare occurrences. 
And for this one, kind of the way to look at it is that if you are a teacher in a classroom and you are using amateur radio as an instruction tool for that classroom, you do not have to refuse pay for the period of time that you are using that radio or operating that radio for classroom instruction. So you can go ahead and get paid as a teacher and use amateur radio as a teaching tool. But of the other possible answers, this is the only correct one. Just focus on the classroom and um, you get the right answer on this one. Under which of the following circumstances are amateur stations authorized to transmit signals related to broadcasting, program production, or news gathering, assuming no other means is available? The answer is only where such communications directly relate to the immediate safety of human life or protection of property. So in every other situation, except in extreme emergencies, broadcasting, program production, and news gathering are not permitted in the amateur service. They are only permitted when they are protecting life, limb, eyesight, or property, so only in extreme emergencies. What is the meaning of the term broadcasting in the FCC rules for the amateur services? Well, broadcasting means transmissions intended for reception by the general public, and this is what you think of when you think of FM or AM commercial radio stations. They are broadcasting to the general public, and they're not necessarily expecting a response from a single individual. Amateur radio is expecting a response from a person in most cases, and that person is another amateur in almost all cases. So broadcasting is transmissions intended for the reception of the general public. When may an amateur station transmit without identifying? The only time an amateur station can transmit without identifying is when it is transmitting signals to control a model aircraft, which makes a lot of sense because you can't stop controlling your aircraft every 10 minutes or so to give like a Morse code identification. So the only time that an amateur station can transmit without identifying itself is when transmitting signals to control a model aircraft. Under which of the following circumstances may an amateur radio station engage in broadcasting? All right, you can engage in broadcasting sometimes, and you can do this when you're transmitting code practice, information bulletins, or in extreme emergencies. So the other answers have like a never or any time type of answer to them, so they're more of an absolute answer. However, you just, just know that Broadcasting is allowed sometimes. However, if you're ever in a situation where you think you might be broadcasting, you really need to double check to make sure you're within the bounds of the FCC regulations. So broadcasting is allowed sometimes. It's allowed for basically code practice, information bulletins, and in emergencies. All right, that's it for the review, and now it's time for the quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 12. When you're done with the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page. Just look for the T1D link. And if uh, I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. All right, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. With which countries are FCC licensed amateur stations prohibited from exchanging communications? A. Any country whose administration has notified the ITU that it objects to such communications. B. Any country whose administration has notified the United Nations that it objects to such communications. C. Any country engaged in hostilities with another country. Or D. Any country in violation of the War Powers Act of 1934. Question 2. On which of the following occasions may an FCC licensed amateur station exchange messages with a U.S. military station? A. During an Armed Forces Day communications test. B. During a Memorial Day celebration. C. During an Independence Day celebration. Or D. During a propagation test. Question 3. When is the transmission of codes or ciphers that hide the meaning of a message allowed by an amateur station? A. Only during contests. B. Only when operating mobile. C. Only when transmitting control commands to space stations or radio control craft or D, only when frequencies above 1280 MHz are used. Question 4. What is the only time an amateur station is authorized to transmit music? A, when incidental to an authorized retransmission of manned spacecraft communications. B, when the music produces no spurious emissions. C, when the purpose is to interfere with an illegal transmission. Or D, when the music is transmitted above 1280 MHz. Question 5. When may amateur radio operators use their stations to notify other amateurs of the availability of equipment for sale or trade? A. When the equipment is normally used in an amateur station and such activity is not conducted on a regular basis. B. When the asking price is $100 or less. 
C, when the asking price is less than the appraised value, or D, when the equipment is not the personal property of either the station licensee or the control operator or their close relatives. Question 6. What, if any, are the restrictions concerning transmission of language that may be considered indecent or obscene? A. The FCC maintains a list of words that are not permitted to be used on amateur frequencies. B. Any such language is prohibited. C. The ITU maintains a list of words that are not permitted to be used on amateur frequencies. Or D. There is no such prohibition. Question 7. What types of amateur stations can automatically retransmit the signals of other amateur stations? A. Auxiliary, beacon, or earth stations. B. Auxiliary, repeater, or space stations. C. Beacon, repeater, or space stations. Or D. Earth, repeater, or space stations. Question 8. In which of the following circumstances may the control operator of an amateur station receive compensation for operating the station? A. When engaging in communication on behalf of their employer. B. When the communication is incidental to classroom instruction at an educational institution. C. When rebroadcasting weather alerts during a races net. Or D. When notifying other amateur operators of the availability for sale or trade of apparatus. Question 9. Under which of the following circumstances are amateur stations authorized to transmit signals related to broadcasting, program production, or news gathering, assuming no other means are, is available? A. Only where such communications directly rate, relate to the immediate safety of human life or protection of property. B. Only when broadcasting communications to or from the space shuttle. C. Only where non-commercial programming is gathered and supplied exclusively to the National Public Radio Network or D, only when using amateur repeaters linked to the internet. Question 10. What is the meaning of the term broadcasting in the FCC rules for the amateur services? A, two-way transmissions by amateur stations. B, transmission of music. C, transmission of messages directed only to amateur operators. D, transmissions intended for reception by the general public. Question 11. When may an amateur station transmit without identifying? A. When the transmissions are of a brief nature to make station adjustments. B. When the transmissions are unmodulated. C. When the transmitted power level is below 1 watt. Or D. When transmitting signals to control a model craft. Question 12. Under which of the following circumstances may an amateur radio station engage in broadcasting? A. Under no circumstances. B. When transmitting code practice, information bulletins, or transmissions necessary to provide emergency communications, C, at any time as long as no music is transmitted, D, at any time as long as the material being transmitted did not originate from a commercial broadcasting station. And that's the end of the T1D section. Now that you're done, go to hamwhisper.com and go to the exam answers page. There you will find the T1D link. Go to that and you'll find the answers to the quiz. And until next time and lesson five, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.